Hey, this is Donna St. Louis and I am officially in transit. I'm headed to the airport and I have exactly 13 minutes to nail this. And this today is all about how to negotiate with a prize bully. <laughs> Sorry, phone rang. This is all about how to negotiate with a prize bully. Not only how do you negotiate, but how do you win and negotiate with a prize bully. And I'm gonna give you a couple of negotiation tactics and something that'll definitely work for you, so pay close attention. Um, first of all, let's talk about what in the heck is a prize bully anyway? So you'll have someone who says, you know, they'll tell you initially that they have this budget and it might be a perfect budget and it might be all in your area. And then they'll turn around and say, oh no, 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 it's not that dollar amount anymore. Um, we have someone who else who came in with a competitive bid. They're bidding against you and they're much lower. And then they'll tell you that it's apples to apples. And then you'll say something like, okay, well, can I see this other competitor's bid? And they'll say, no, I can't show it to you. <laughs> so, so now you're literally sitting across from someone, you're trying to take their word at it that they have this bid and they have brought the price down so low and they're trying to get you to work with that price. So that's a price bully, right? They're doing that whole low price bid, low bid type of thing and it's, and it's killing you. So how do you deal with someone who is a price bully? Okay, first negotiation tactic. Number one, the reason they're doing that is because they think, they believe, they know that they have the power. And unfortunately, during the negotiation, you gave up that power. You gave up a little bit too much power. So now you have to get it back. That's the first thing. So you've lost the power and you have to get it back. Um, so this is gonna be hard for some people to hear, but you're gonna have to be willing to walk away from the deal. And you're gonna have to be willing to say, you know, just doesn't look like we're gonna work, we're gonna be able to work together. I know, that's scary for some people. And I'm gonna tell you exactly what to say, because Connie Podesta taught me this and it's brilliant. I'm gonna tell you exactly what today during that, to say when you get to that to point of the conversation. But before you get there, let me tell you something else that you can do. So let's say, for example, that they say, you know, the price is supposed is, needs to be here and they come up with this low price dollar amount. Then I like to do something like that, like this. I go, you know, okay, so it's, you know, $50,000 and you, you know, you want to be at 40 or you want to be at 30, whatever the magic number is. And I'll say, well, let me tell you what you can get for 30. And then what I do is I literally scratch off all the things they're not going to get. So in other words, 50 has these 10 items, but 30 has only maybe these four, right? So we can get you there. This is what that's going to cost you. So you literally have to be willing to pull stuff away. And it might be they're gonna lose product. It might be that they're gonna lose services. It might even be that they're gonna lose the timeline. Um, or maybe they're not gonna have the same amount of resources. But whatever it is, you start pulling things back from the deal because they've made it clear that they can only deal within a certain budget. And if you don't value yourself, the person you're negotiating with definitely is not going to do it. So that's number one. Here's the second thing you can do. This one works flawlessly well. Uh, like I said, it's something Connie Podesta taught me and it's brilliant and I've added, I've tweaked it a little bit. But here's the basis of it is that you first have to ask them, for example, let's say it's their organization and you have to ask them how would they rate their organization, the organization that you're selling to. So maybe you're working with an association or someone else and I'm not driving, somebody else is. Um, maybe you're working with an association or someone else and the association says, well, you know, I think our members are, are eight, nine, and 10. Now you should see this conversation. You should say, you know, you guys have, it, it's clear we're not gonna work together. That's the first thing you do. You start off the conversation by saying, it is clear we are not going to work together. And what you're doing at this point is you're telling them that the negotiation is over. I'm gonna tell you that the negotiation is not over. However, if you remember the first rule of negotiations, which is the most dangerous negotiation you're in is the negotiation you don't know you're in. So what you've done by saying it's clear we're not gonna work together is you've gotten your, the person sitting across the table from you to drop their guard. So now they've dropped their guard. Okay, now that they've dropped their guard, you're still negotiating and they're not. So then you wanna go to the second step and you wanna ask them, you know, I'm just curious, how, how do you guys rate your, the members of your association? Now, how do you rate your company? Is 
would you say like you guys are the best of the best you're prime you're like eight nine and ten or would you put your like ones twos and threes like you're not even sure why you're doing this conference because these people aren't even really worth it most people have a little bit of an ego and they're gonna say I work with the best of the best of course I wouldn't work with a subpar company eight nine and ten so now you've gotten them to admit they're an eight nine and ten company they have eight nine and ten people so then you'll say well let me ask a question why then would you have a budget for a company that's probably going to be rated a four five or six or one two or three in other words why would you have a budget for a lower rated company because see my company is rated at an eight nine and ten and because we're rated at an eight nine and ten we have an eight nine and ten budget but you're literally gonna choose a four five and four five or six organization that's gonna say that they can actually deliver something but when it comes down to it if they're not making any money they're not going to be delivering it for long so I hope you don't need any support so now you're starting to poke holes in those things when you do this remember you have to be willing to walk away from the deal but what you've done is you kind of you kind of hit the ego a little bit and you've hit that trigger of that ego and you've said listen from an ego perspective you guys are getting cheap crap and you know I'm the best of the best and the reason my rate is what my rate is because I do what I do and if that's not gonna work for you then God bless you go ahead and get the cheapest and what I like to tell them is this I'm like listen I'm rated a, an 8 9 and 10 speaker I travel internationally I'm on my way to London right now I'm, I'm literally at the airport right and so once I once I say you know that's why I'm pulling the rate I do, but, and you say you have an eight, nine, and 10 audience, but you're gonna have a four, five, and six speaker on your stage? Don't do that. Why are you gonna waste everyone's time? Why don't you do this instead? Don't hire me. Don't hire another four, five, or six speaker. Go and get yourself a level nine A player in your, from your organization and have someone coach them up so they can speak. Do that instead, right? So do that, so that way, yeah, my video is flipped. I'm not driving, I'm in the car. Um, somebody else is driving. Um, but anyway, do that instead. And so what I've done to them in this psychological thing is I've made them realize that they're gonna have a bad event. They're gonna have a bad whatever that is. And once they realize that this is not gonna go their direction, even if they don't make that decision right there to pick you, it is going to make them think about it. It's going to keep that decision maker up at night. It is going to make them come back to you. I always then like to go and use the straight kitten effect after this and say, you know, I would have loved for us to work together. It would have been great. And I know you can't show me the other person's proposals because they've already said they can't. But now you can ask this question. Based on what the other person proposed outside of price, what advice can you give me to ensure that my proposal next time doesn't even leave a question especially in the regards to the price area because I truly believe that when people start talking to you about price then you've missed something on value and now you have an opportunity to talk to them about that value ask their advice put them back into the power playing position because you literally just smacked them around for a few minutes so put them back into that power playing position so that way they feel like okay you know now I'm, I'm powerful again I don't suck I'm gonna help this person now they're, they know they're not negotiating with you. They no, now want to help you. And in that help, they will also try to get you, believe it or not, the engagement or the deal or whatever. So those are the two tactics you want to do. Make sure you do the rating of the organization, the product, and your competitors. Do that, number one. And then number two, use the stray kitten effect. And before you do either one of those, make sure that you're clear that we are no longer negotiating because you need them to drop their guard. You really need them to let go of the negotiations. Once they've let go of the negotiations, by the way, you will just find that you're sitting across from a person who's way more open to sharing information with you and they will be more likely to uh, be amenable to whatever it is that you're sharing. Anyway, I'm at the airport right now and perfect timing because we're actually just parking for me to get out of the car <laughs> so I, I'm headed to London I'm gonna try to do some live streams from London just because I've gone there a couple of times but I haven't really been able to go out and see the city as much as I'd like to so I'm gonna show you like stuff that Donna gets excited about when she goes to a new city because I'm like oh my god a castle that's that's I'm that person 
I'm that annoying person that goes, oh my God, a castle. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Have a good one. Bye.